Welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to continue with our theme that we've been building and so far we are able to add new items into our cart. We can remove them, we can be able to remove everything else that we have here and have our total calculating and then we have the two buttons here that allow us to view the cart or to check out. Now the one thing that is really missing is having buttons that can be used here. So we have these items that are actually variable in nature and that's why we have to click the select button and we see that this takes us to square 404. Now this should be a one page experience for us and we are going to turn this select options that we have here into a little button like we do have right here. So let's see how to do that and then we'll be able to click that button and then have a pop-up of the different variables that we can add to our cart. Now of course when we go back into our dashboard admin, you'll be able to go to some of those products. For example, when we see the barbecue steak, if we choose to edit it, you're going to see that down here it's a variable product and it has different variations like small, pepperoni, that is with a different price from all the others and we have things like large pepperoni or large olives showing up. So let's go into our theme and see what's going to happen as we change this. So I'll open up my editor here and the first thing that we shall do is go on our front page.php and when we scroll down we'll get to the section where we are showing our different items. Now the first thing that I'll do is I'm going to reduce this to about 2, I'll change this to 8 so that this takes up a larger space and then I'll duplicate this one that we have here so that I can separate the price and also separate our actual add to cart item. So I'll click this and then I'll save this. Now you'll see that we have our loop and add to cart PHP that is inside our WooCommerce here. So I'm going to WooCommerce, check our loop and then I'm going to look at our add to cart. Now inside here you'll see that we actually have one A tag checks if we have an add to cart URL, it checks the quantity, checks the class, the attributes and add to cart. So after editing that let me save it, come back here and when I reload you'll see that things are starting to look a little bit better and tighter. So in here I'm going to change this select options into a plus button that will trigger off a model that we can use to have all our variable items. So let me go back into our code in here and let's check the loop to cut in here to see what triggers off those different items. You realize that this particular code is the one that's echoing out the add to cart button or the select option. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check if we are dealing with a variable product. So I'll add this in quotes and say if we're dealing with a variable product and the way we are going to get this is by getting the product from this global that we have here and we're going to use the get type method that is attached to that. And once we get that we'll be able to know whether we're dealing with a variable or not and for now I'm just going to echo var to allow us to see what's happening and if it's not a variable, let's say it's a grouped or it's a simple product, then we shall have this else statement and we shall bring this back so that we don't break anything. So I'll save this, reload our front end, I'll come back to pizza and you're going to see we have a VAR of var right here. So what I'm going to do right now is just change some things. What we want to do ideally is what we have here in Bootstrap. When I come to these different pieces that we have here, I can see a live demo and when I click this button, you're able to see this model that is actually here. So I'll copy this text that we see here, come back into this section, I'll switch in for what we have for var, I'll paste in this HTML, save it, reload what we have here. When we come to the pizza you'll see we have the launch demo here and when I click it we have our model 
actually showing up right here. So what I'm going to do next is actually add just dynamic data and probably change this button that we have here into what we want it to look like. So the first thing I'll do is change this button into an A tag, so we'll have it as a link and we're going to wrap it around a font awesome icon and this icon is going to be a plus circle. So I'll save this, come back to my functions and then I will enqueue a new style which I'll call font awesome CSS with this ID. I'll then add this CSS link and then attach that there are no dependencies, it's a version one and it will be allowed on all kinds of media. If you skip the video on how to enqueue scripts and styles, please watch it, it's part of this series. Then I'll save everything that we have here, I'll come back to our front end reload and when I come back to our pizza you're going to see that we have these big blue icons showing up here. So when I click on them we still get our model but now it's looking a lot better like we want it to be. Okay, so the next thing now we need to do is just add our dynamic data in here. We're going to clean up some of these things like the save changes and close. We don't want that to be so, we are just going to use the X after we've finished adding or buying our items. So I'll come back in here, we have this close which is the dismiss button, I'll remove this modal footer and then inside here is where we shall add our body and then we shall also add an ID in here so that we have different and unique product IDs showing up here. So let me save this and let's see what we're actually going to get when we have dump this product right here. So, so what I'm going to do for now is just come back to our front page and then allow this to become 8 so that we can see more of that, I'll change this to 1, save it so that we can see what's happening. So in here I'm going to look for one thing, I'm going to look for the slug which will act like our ID because it's unique, come back here and undo what we did to make sure that all our pages are working well, come back here, I'll get this example model and what I'm going to do is add some PHP to it by adding these small quotations and then coming here adding product and then I'll chain on the slug. And once I have that I'm going to save it, come back here, reload what we have here, I need to get rid of this var dump so that it stops showing up, so I'll comment this out, save this, reload, when we come back to pizza and hit this, we'll see we have that, when we close we'll see that we have all of this showing up and if I inspect the element you're going to see that we have different things showing up all together. So we have barbecue pizza and then we have its model of barbecue pizza right here. If I come to the margarita, you'll see that we have margarita pizza, we have the model for it and we have all the different information showing up here. So we can be able to put all our different items in the model that we've just made and then check it, select it, add to our cart and then we'll be out of there. So in the next video I'll show you how we can implement all of that inside our model right here. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, let me know what you think in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and if you want to support the channel please check in the description how you can be able to do that, otherwise enjoy your day.